Hello everyone. Here we're going to talk about Pareto efficient allocations in the Edgeworth box. So this is the Edgeworth box that we looked at previously and we identified that there is this point, point Z. Point Z is the endowment point. It's some allocation where um, each of them has an amount. Ayanda had nine units of X and one unit of Y. Biko had 14 units of Y and one unit of X. That's what happens at point Z. And at point Z, we also know as to any point in an Edgeworth box, both of the players have indifference curves through that point. Okay, so both Ayanda and Biko have an indifference curve through point Z. And so we can see that that's um, U2B and U2A for the two players. The question is, is this allocation Pareto efficient? Okay, and remember, we said that an allocation is Pareto efficient when there exists no alternative allocation that's Pareto superior to it. Okay, so we want to think about alternative allocations in the Edgeworth box where at least one person could be better off and no one would be made worse off relative to point Z. Now here's the thing. We can look at the Edgeworth box and we can see that there are going to be many different allocations that could be Pareto superior to point Z. So we're going to have to think about um, how to find those. And the rule that we're going to use is the moderator substitution A um, for A is going to be equal to the moderator substitution for B in the Edgeworth box. That is going to give us our Pareto efficient allocations. Okay, so um, the allocation Z is not Pareto efficient. The reason why is because the two players have um, indifference curves that intersect at that point. They have different slopes and therefore they have different margin rates of substitution. You might think, okay, but why does that mean that they're Pareto inefficient? It means that they're Pareto inefficient because the two players have different willingness to pay. So if Ayanda's willingness to pay um, in good Y for good X is not equal to Biko's willingness to pay in good Y for good X, that means that there are opportunities for them to exchange their goods until such point as their willingnesses to pay are equal. When their willingness to pay are equal, that means that there are no alternative points where they could do better than the point where the moderative substitution for the one is equal to the moderative substitution for the other, or where A's willingness to pay is equal to B's willingness to pay. Okay, so willingness to pay to acquire one or more units of the one or the other could differ at that point. So if we go back to the um, figure, what can we see here? At point Z, if we're describing Ayanda's indifference curve, hers are very flat at that point. That means she has a low margin rate of substitution. She doesn't want to pay much Y in order to get an additional unit of X. Now here's the thing. If we look at the same thing for Biko, his indifference curves are very steep. He would pay a lot of Y in order to get an additional unit of X. So this means that there are opportunities for them to do better. Remember we had the arrow that went up from the corner there, suggesting there were opportunities for them to both do better. Here, the idea is that if A um, gives up some X in order to get some more Y, then she is going to do better. If B gives up some Y in order to get more X, he is going to do better. And then the point at which they're going to stop is where their willingnesses to pay are equal, or where their margin rates of substitution are equal. So let's go back and think through that once more. Um, what we're going to say is that there are going to be feasible Pareto improving reassignments of goods that have not been realized at point Z. They can engage in exchange with each other in order for them both to do better. Therefore, Z is not Pareto efficient. There are alternative Pareto superior allocations to point Z because their margin rates of substitution are not equal. So the Pareto efficient curve is a term that we're going to use repeatedly throughout the book. And the idea here is that the points making up the Pareto efficient curve represent all of the allocations that are Pareto efficient. The Pareto efficient curve is sometimes also called the contract cur curve. And we're not really going to use that term because you don't actually need a contract in order to arrive at um, a point on the Pareto efficient curve. But we're going to call it the PEC or Pareto efficient curve. So you might want to think, okay, well, what does such a curve look like? Well, here we have um, a, um, an Edgeworth box between Ayanda and Biko. And we're going to see here that um, any point at which the player's um, indifference curves intersect cannot be a Pareto efficient allocation. So we're going to see here Z, 
they're intersecting at point Z at the endowment point. And we're then seeing this alternative curve over here, which is going from the one corner to the other. And what else is happening along that point? Well, the indifference curves here, what we're seeing is that all the points along the Pareto efficient curve are points where they have um, tangency between the two players um, in difference curves. Now, why is that the case? If I consider point TA over here, what you can see is that A's indifference curve U3A is tangent to um, UBZ. Okay, that point there is a point of tangency between the indifference curves. Similarly, TB over here, what can we see there? We can see that um, B cos indifference curve UB4 is tangent to Ayanda's indifference curve UZA. And um, when they're tangent, the marginal rates of substitution are equal. So the Pareto efficient curve is capturing every single point in the Edgeworth box where there are indifference curves that are tangent to each other. Now here for these indifference curves that we've drawn for this specific box, the two players have um, different preferences. And we say that one of them likes coffee more than the other one does, and one of them likes data more than the other one does. So if we're looking at these curves, what can we think? Well, it's going to be the case here that Ayanda likes coffee more than Biko does, and Biko likes data more than Ayanda does, right? So that's just their preferences that they have. And so um, when we think about this, you can see that the Pareto efficient allocations, typically they're going to allocate um, a bit more coffee to um, Ayanda and um, more data to Biko. Um, just if we're looking at along the curve for the different trades that they might make. Now, the reason for that is because of these asymmetrical preferences where one of them has a stronger preference for coffee and the other has a stronger preference for data. So this is a general idea for the Pareto efficient curve. And this one here is in fact curved, but we're going to look at ones later where we could have a linear um, Pareto efficient curve, just going from one corner of the box to the other. Um, other Edgeworth boxes we're going to have are in fact going to have another linear um, Pareto efficient curve, which just goes from the top to the bottom of the curve. Pareto efficient curves, the only thing that we need in order to find them is that the indifference curves are tangent at those points. Right, that's all we need to find the Pareto efficient curve. Depending on their preferences, the shape of the um, Pareto efficient curve is going to change. Sometimes it's going to be linear, sometimes it's not. Okay, so when we're thinking about this and we're thinking about the ways of qualifying this, what are the things that we're seeing? The Pareto efficient allocations are the ones that occur where their indifference curves are tangent. So they have the same slopes. When they have the same slopes, what happens? They have identical marginal rates of substitution. So Ayanda's marginal rate of substitution of Y for X equals Biko's marginal rate of substitution of Y for X. And therefore they have identical willingness to pay. The amount of Y that Ayanda is willing to pay to get an additional unit of X is going to be identical to Biko's willingness to pay in Y to get an additional unit of X. So, when that occurs, it means that there is no feasible alternative Pareto improving exchange. They've both satisfied what they can get as much as possible in terms of what's feasible. Okay, now what this also means um, um, when we think about this, um, and that's we've left a little point out there the status quo allocation, allocation is in fact Pareto inefficient if we think about point Z. Okay, so we saw earlier that point Z is Pareto inefficient because at that point, the indifference curves were intersecting each other. When the indifference curves intersected each other, that was not a Pareto efficient allocation. But we could arrive at a Pareto efficient allocation when the marginal rate of substitution of A was equal to the marginal rate of substitution of B. Ayanda's willingness to pay was equal to Biko's willingness to pay. We are going to use this exact condition in a later video to show a way to compute the equation for the Pareto efficient curve.